The Apostle Paul said. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Colossians chapter 2 verses 6 through 7. We stand at the cusp of a new year, 2023, and like many of us, I take time to reflect and resolve. Today, I ask myself this question. Sam, who are you, and what difference does that make? Among the many titles that I give myself or that have been bestowed upon me, husband, father, specialist, friend, colleague. What I will dwell on today, is that I am a Christian. But if I say I am a Christian, what does that mean? Being a Christian, for me, means that, I have responded to the Holy Spirit's conviction. And have accepted the salvation that Jesus purchased by sacrificing himself on the cross. And that the Holy Spirit lives within me. The Apostle Paul reminds us of who we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 through 20. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So the first thing I tell myself is that I am not my own. I do not deceive myself with progressive platitudes and philosophies. I am not the master of my ship, I am not the author of my story. I have been bought at a high price, I belong to Jesus. If today I am free from the shackles of sin, it is because Jesus found me worthy enough to die for my freedom. If today I sing and shout, it is because the Holy Spirit dwells in me, and He is enabling me to know and fulfill all of God's purposes and plans for my life. God has from the beginning authored a plan and a purpose for my earthly sojourn. Nothing happens to me by chance. I never say I am lucky such and such a thing happened to me. Everything that happens along this life journey all fits into God's perfect plan for me. How do I know this? I know because God has said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, Psalm chapter 37 verse 23. I see myself as the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. Bible says, Jesus was having a busy day preaching and teaching, whilst his disciples were baptized the new converts. Then out of the blue, Jesus announced that he was going to Samaria. I love how John writes it. But he needed to go through Samaria, John chapter 4 verse 4. That must have come as a surprise to all who were present. The Jews and the Samaritans were not particularly friendly with each other. The Jews had very little to do with the Samaritans, and so they avoided them as much as possible. Since they had very little contact I would imagine that the road between their towns was not particularly smooth. It was not a well-traveled road. So it was possible that wild animals roamed freely since there were very few humans around. All these did not bother Jesus, he needed to go through Samaria. He had to be at a particular place at the sixth hour. The Samaritan woman must have been going about her normal business. Mindful of her past, I do not think she interacted much with many people. She thought she was sneaking off to the well to fetch water before the other women did. Maybe for some odd reason, she needed to quench this thirst that had risen up her throat. And so at the sixth hour, she got to the well. This woman who needed her heavy burden of sin lifted had to be there. It was no coincidence that she met the Savior of the world. Jesus needed to meet her at the sixth hour. That was not a lucky encounter. That was a divine appointment. I can talk about the little slave girl who was taken by the raiders from Aram and found herself in the house of Naaman. I can talk about Joseph and why he needed to be in Egypt. I can talk of the woman with the issue of blood and why she needed to be on the other side of the lake. I can talk of Zacchaeus and why he needed to be up the tree. These were not lucky encounters. God told the prophet Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb I knew you. Before you were born I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. And so I face this new year, 2023, knowing that I am a born again Christian. The child of the king of kings, who has conquered death for me. And seated me in heavenly places and has bestowed on me all the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And I know that, no matter the challenges, difficulties, and setbacks that I may encounter, as I journey through this year, I know how the year's story will end. I have read the last chapter of my life book, and I know that in the end, righteousness is rewarded, and unrighteousness is punished. So every morning I will ask myself, whom do I belong to? And I will answer, I am and will always be the child of the King of Kings. This will be my reminder not to do or say anything. That would contradict what I know to be God's plan and purpose for me.
and that whatever I do or say should be to the glory of God. The second part of my question for this year is. What difference does being a Christian make? Being a Christian means I am to surrender to the Holy Spirit. I am to allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through me. To transform me into the image of Christ. This would mean I must walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the desires of my flesh. I must, with the help of the Holy Spirit, discipline my body and bring it into subjection, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 27. I need that discipline to run the full course of the race before me. Not only will I discipline my body, but I will also not entangle myself with the affairs of this world, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. My focus will be on seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. To that end I will eat the word of God every day, and it be a light on my path to guide my steps. Another difference I am to make is to bear the fruits of the Spirit. By surrendering myself to the Holy Spirit, and allowing him to work through me, I should bear in my life such fruits as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruits I bear should not only fulfill me but should also touch those around me. This means that I have a responsibility to share the good news of the gospel with others. I am obligated as a soldier of the King of Kings to conquer territories for my Lord. I have no excuse whatsoever. I will tell them even as I go on my knees every day to pray for them. I join Charles Spurgeon in saying, O oh my brothers and sisters, if sinners will be damned, at least let them leap to hell over our dead bodies. If they will perish, let them perish with our arms about their legs. Imploring them to stay, and not madly destroy themselves. If hell must be filled, at least let it be filled in the teeth of our exertions. And let no one go there unwarned and unprayed for. And the people I share the gospel with, and pray for, must see the fruits of the Spirit in me. They must so see the good news of the gospel alive in me that, they would want to associate with my God. The sharing of the gospel also entails, contending for the faith. And so I will remind myself to, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. As I step into this new year, my prayer is that I will allow Christ to live in and through me. And that my daily walk with him will draw others to ask about the hope that is within me. May God richly bless us all as we seek to follow him this new year. Thanks for watching.